Perfect. Great. Hello. It's great to be here. So there's lots of reasons why diversity and inclusion are good and important. But one of the big ones is that inclusive teams are high performance teams. But the big question is, how do we get there? How do we create that inclusion? And allies are a big part of the answer that we see. So I'll talk to you a little bit more today about who allies are and how you can become one yourself. I'm going to start first with a story. This is a story of a time when an ally has been really important in my life. One of my first jobs out of university, as Colert mentioned, was with a management consulting firm in San Francisco. And so uh, my very first case, I was assigned to work with a company that makes semiconductor chips. And from day one, my manager just didn't really seem to trust me. He would often talk over me in meetings or didn't seem to hear when I contributed an idea. He would often swing by my desk every hour or so and just check on what I was doing. And our feedback chats were long lists of things that I was doing wrong. And so after a few weeks of this, I was feeling pretty demotivated. And it was about that time that the partner on the case swung by my desk. This was the most senior person on our entire team. And he stopped by and asked me how I was doing. To which I lied, I didn't think he would really care, and said I was fine. And then he said, there were a few things that he noticed the manager doing, and he wanted to get some input from me before talking to the manager about what he had noticed. And that was the turning point. And it wasn't easy. The uh, partner had a conversation, and I had lots of conversations, and we all put in a lot of work. But that one simple action, which for the partner was just checking in and having a conversation with my manager, was ultimately career-changing for me. I went from wondering how many months I was going to make myself stay at this firm to eventually staying for years, getting promoted, managing other people myself. And so, just so you don't judge anyone in the photo, this is from a team I worked with later on in my time there. Um, and the people on this team were wonderful. <laughs> and so, in that moment, the partner was acting as an ally for me, and it was career changing. So, what is an ally officially? It's someone who's working to understand their own privilege and taking action to end oppression. There's a lot of big words in that, so let me break them down. Privilege is an unearned advantage that we give to some people, but not to all people. So for example, on this case team, the partner was aware that by being the most senior person in the room, both age-wise and hierarchy-wise, he had influence that I didn't as the most junior person in the room. And then the second piece here, is taking action to end oppression when it happens. So oppression is a systemic, pervasive inequality that benefits some people and harms others. And in this case, the action that the partner took was after he had observed something was going on, he took the time to check in on how he was doing and then also to speak to the manager. And that was the key ally action. And if you look into this, allies are incredibly important for creating change. I won't read this research, but essentially what it's saying is that when someone is experiencing oppression and tries to speak out about it, they're more likely to be punished and penalized. But when an ally speaks out, not only are they not punished, they're actually much more likely to be praised because we see that they're trying to help someone else. We see that it's a good deed. And so as I learned more and more about allies, I realized a major thing, which was that though allies had helped me in my life, and, and I appreciated all the times that they jumped in to help me, there are actually many more situations where I needed to be the ally myself. And I'm gonna bet that every single one of you has a situation where you too can be the ally. Here are some ideas of times where you might be able to be an ally. And what's interesting about this is, even though someone might experience marginalization in one case, in another case, that same person could be an ally. So on this case team, I was, being, um, I was experiencing marginalization maybe in part because I was the youngest person on the team, maybe in part because I was one of the few women. But in another situation, and in fact, in most of these cases up here, I could be an ally. So one example would be if there's fat shaming that's happening. I have something called body size privilege, which I won't go into, but it means that I'm in a great position to speak out when that type of thing is happening. And so hopefully by now you've found something on this list where you see, yep, this is an area where I too could be an ally. 
So let's talk about how you can do that. And I'm gonna give you an example that we use in some of our workshops with corporates. So I've seen this lots of times in lots of parts of the world. Imagine that you're at a party and one of your peers isn't drinking due to personal reasons. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter why they're not drinking. And despite knowing this, others in your group spend the evening saying that they're weird and no fun and trying to get them to drink alcohol, even though they know that this person's not. So what could you do in this situation? Let me, oh, I love it, you're so ready. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna give you some tips and we'll come back to the, the ready answers in the bag. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, round of applause for that. Um, so we see three key steps to allyship. And the first sounds simple, but is actually the hardest because it's being aware. So a big part of how this stuff continues is that something which feels easy for an ally might be very marginalizing for someone else in the room. And so the magic of allies is that they're able to put themselves in other people's shoes and understand even when it's easy for me, it's not the same for someone else. And again, that was what my partner was doing. It was the partner on the case. It was easy for him, but he could see there were a lot, there's a lot of stuff that was coming my way that wasn't coming towards him. And so I have some tips up here about the ways that you could find stories and perspectives from other marginalized voices. And the second big thing is observing. So the next time you're with a group of people, just observe. Who's talking the most? Who's talking the least? Who's getting interrupted? Who's not getting credit when they bring up a good idea? And as you're observing, and as you're learning more about your own areas of privilege, I also invite you to observe your own areas of discomfort. And something I've found is that whenever I feel uncomfortable, that's where there's the biggest opportunity for me to learn and to get better myself. So that's step one. Step two, we can't act as an ally unless we're role modeling good behavior ourselves. And so once you've done that observing, then you can be proactive and think about, well, hold on a second. In this conversation, I'm talking a lot more than other people. And so you can proactively pause and invite someone else into the conversation. And also be aware of who you're interrupting. And again, be thoughtful, try to catch yourself before you do that interruption. And being careful to use respectful language. There's lots of throwaway phrases and curse words that we use, which I won't go into, but oftentimes those are targeting certain groups of people and can be alienating and marginalizing to them. And then finally, once you've done all this pre-work, then you're ready, you're ready to take action as an ally. And so the, what's amazing about this is as you saw, it can be simple and easy. Even just saying awkward or that's not cool can go a long way. The second point here, playing to the audience is also really important. Usually the person who's doing the action that's marginalizing will be the hardest to convince. But at the same time, oftentimes there are many bystanders who aren't sure yet what to think about this situation. And so play to them when you're thinking of your response. The next one here, allyship isn't about being a hero. It's not about carrying someone else's load for them. It's about carrying their load with them. Because even when someone's being marginalized, they still have a voice, they still have talents, and they still have abilities. And so ultimately, it's about us standing together. And then finally, a big part of learning is making mistakes. And so a major part of my own journey into allyship has been recognizing that sometimes, even though I intended well, the end result didn't match the intent. And so being able to say I'm sorry and learning from it, and then moving on and still continuing to try. So now we're gonna go back to that example here, and I'd love to hear from the person in the back about how you would respond, um, in a sentence, because I'm being timed. <laughs> Fabulous. That's a great example. And what I love about that too is um, this is actually, what you just said is a tip for any time you're at, you're running an event. So whoever's running it should make sure that if there are alcoholic drinks, that they're equally fun and interesting non-alcoholic drinks. And so if someone just wants to hide and doesn't even wanna have to have that conversation, they can. The other thing, I mentioned the saying that's not cool. Even just saying it's not cool to make fun of someone for what they're drinking. It sounds kind of dull and obvious, but that's enough to get somebody to pause and think. And then I mentioned the systemic piece. So one, you can have great non-alcoholic drinks out there. And a second one is mixing up what you're doing for the event. So if it's a work function, it doesn't have to be Friday evening drinks after work. You could do it different times a day. You could have different types of activities. 
And so we can get creative and find ways to prevent this from happening again. And so by now you've seen that allies are people who take small actions for them that lead to big changes and have a massive impact on the lives of other people. And when you're ready to do more on your own allyship journey, or when you're ready to get your organization to do more, I've included our contact info there, and so you can reach out to us and learn a little bit about the workshops and the consulting work we do around this. But I invite you all to find ways that you can be the ally. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs>